Welcome everybody to our today's webinar, which will be a fun webinar, I guess. And uh, I, I was really looking forward to this one because it is, uh, on the one hand, it is a playground and it's very nice and uh, a lot of fun to play with your data, but it's also about the core of Jump. And you probably know that Jump is very visual. Uh, and uh, indeed, with every almost every gra uh, statistic in Jump, you also get a graphic without explicitly asking for it. And there's even more. So the graphs are dynamic and that really provides an interface to your data. So you can really see what, what's going on and you can better learn from your data. So this is about more about exploratory analysis, but visuals are also nice and helpful to yeah, communicate your results and uh, tell your story. And you see that data visualization, you probably know that is really powerful and effective, but, and that's the other side of the same metal, um, also statistical analysis, also in a broader context, including predictive modeling and other applications is also powerful and effective, but in a different way. And the best is really to combine both sides into one tool set. And that's what you get by jump. And that's what we call statistical discovery. So today we will just look into the data visualization world of jump tools. But I mentioned this because don't forget a good and powerful data visualization can also really boost your analysis later on. And one booster and maybe the booster for your data analysis is the graph builder in jump. So if you for instance, look at the jump starter. And if you choose the graph category, you see that graph builder is mentioned on top. And it says this tool is to build graphs interactively by dragging columns into graph zones. So this is really the number one platform to go for interactive graphing. And if you want to read about it, so there's also a chapter in the jump help and the online documentation, go to the essential graphing book and there you can read about graph builder. And this says graph builder is to explore multidimensional relationships with ease and flexibility. You can quickly create and modify plots using graph builders interactive interface. Select the variables you want to graph and drag and drop them into zones. So that sounds easy and you will see it is really easy. So if you are not that patient to, to read the documentation first, just to get started, I would also like to refer you to our learning library. And if you choose graphical displays and summaries, you get access to our one page guides and uh, sh uh, short videos which also get you started with graph builder, with mapping and other visualization topics. So here's another preview. So, so that's a very tiny screenshot. And this is not to, uh, to show you any um, information or any details. So this is more as a teaser to show you that you can really get very different and really cool visualizations just from the same platform, which is Graph Builder. And this is from, from the user community. It's a, a tutorial um, shared by Xan Greg, so who is our who is leading the development of Graph Builder um, at Jump in, in the US. So let's get started. And how do you create a graph using Graph Builder? So there, there are just a few steps. So one step is get a data set. And Graph Builder is the number one 
visualization tool and maybe big class dot jmp or jump is the number one sample data set it's, it's a very small uh, sample data set and this is about school kids you probably know this already so we have 40 kids from a class and we have their names age and sex and height and weight information in 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 this data set so let's do some graphing using these data so I select the graph builder from the graph menu. It's the first option on, on that menu and you get to this interface. So the next step is to drag columns from the variable list into the drop zones. And you see here we have the, the, the graphing area, so the palette. So we can pick variables from our list on the left and then drag and drop them to these zones here. So for instance, I take the height, which is a continuous variable, and I just drop it in the middle of that palette. And then jump does two things. So first jump picks a drop zone where to use this variable. And in this case, the Y axis has been used. And second, jump also picks a way to show these data. So the graphing type or element, the graphing element chosen is the points element. So in this case, we, th we see the points of height, the data points, and on one dimension and on the X axis, they are just jittered. So this graphing element the points, they also have some settings or properties. And one of them is the jitter and the jitter is switched on by default. So I take another variable and start to drag it. And now you see the drop zones. The drop zones are the blue zones, which tell me, hey, drop the variable here. Uh, and uh, all of these zones are talking to me. So this says, hey, give it to me. So for X scaling on an X axis, give it to me for grouping on the X axis or grouping on the Y axis you know, or for wrapping overlay. Yeah, I just drop it in the middle as well. And we get this here. So now we have a scatter plot and we see the data points on the Y and an X, which is height and weight. So there's also a smoother element, which is typically activated by, by default. If you just drop it there without any other movements, you also get the, the smoother um, element. So two elements active at the same time. We see the points and on top of that, we also see the smoother. And the smoother also has some settings, including the, the, the lambda, so you can make it, move it, change it into a line, or also do some, some yeah, overfitting probably on the other end. So there are more variables, and let us take the age information and let's see how we can add it to our graph. So you see there, there are many options yeah and one option is this here to overlay and overlay creates does some grouping for us so now we see the smoother element grouped by age and here we see the legend with the colors and we see a smoother per age group also the data points are colored by H. So the overlay did some, some grouping for us. And now I can start to yeah, customize the output and the graph. Um, so I can change the lambda. I can also right click everywhere. So that's a standard jump, right click. And then I can choose maybe a different background color. I can change this to, to, to yellow. I can 
work on the legend. I can change colors. I can also move the legend on the right triangle. Also standard jump. The right triangle gives you many options to, to modify what you see or to dig deeper. So I can move the legend into the, into the graph. I can also change the title. Yeah, so I can just, if this is my class 7a, and these are the, the kids we see here with their height and weight by age. So then the, the title is maybe a bit better uh, to describe what we see here. Yeah, and I can also point to some, some data points and see who they are. So this one is, is Michael, for instance. Uh, maybe I can also choose the names and th the name is already used for labeling. And maybe I know that Lawrence is a, is a tall guy. So I can also switch labeling on just for Lawrence on that row. Uh, and then we see that data point labeled as well. So I do this until I'm happy with what I see. And then don't forget, click done. And then our graph is, is done. So we, we used three variables, height, weight, and age for grouping. And we have two active elements right now. So we see the points and we see the smoothers. Yeah, after clicking done, if you want to change anything and modify the graph, you can get the control panel back on the right triangle and now we can continue. So for instance, I can change the smoother <clears throat> into a line of fit. Yeah, so now we see a fitted line for all age groups. I can also change the, the function here, the degree, so set it to second degree. Then we see quadratic fits to, to our um, data points. In some cases, some age groups, we don't have enough data points. So we also see a broad confidence band as well. Um, <clears throat> I can also add a few statistics um, like R squared. And in this case, maybe we should move the, the legend again out of the graph. So to avoid the overlap here. And I could also add a capture here and there maybe on the caption box. I don't want to see the mean. I want to show the number of kids per age group. Yeah, so we have eight H still used for, for overlay. I can also take it from here and move it to another drop zone for instance, into wrap. And now we see the fitted curves and the data points per age group. And we have six, six ages in, um, in, in this class from 12 to 17. And now they are grouped and we see them individual smoothers and scatter plots on a grid. Okay, so when you're done, you click done. And that's our our graph now. So you already saw how to 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 use graph builder and maybe you got an idea you, you will see some, some, some other tricks and ways and to add more information later. But you already saw that there's the control panel you can show or hide when you're done. Yeah, you also have buttons on the control panel and, and these are, let me get it back to see them. So you can always undo the last action or you can start from scratch again. Yeah, and when you're done, you click done and then the panel will be hidden again. So you have the list of variables. You see the graph area where you can drop variables and you see also drop zones to drop variables directly in a specific zone. Um, you have the, the graph elements on top and we will see um, more use of them in a few minutes. And 
all the elements also have settings or properties you can configure in the control panel. And of course, some, some text information like title and legend and footer typically. And as always in Jump, you have a red triangle. And don't forget the right click with further menus and other options. And we will see some options on, on the right click menu um, also later on. So we see the drop zones on the on the right hand side and maybe it's helpful to keep in mind that there are different zones they have a different nature so, so some of the zones including the x and y dimension and the map shape so they control how to position the data and then you have the coloring and sizing and you have the frequency zone which modify certain elements. Yeah, so that's how to, how to uh, show the data and uh, positioning and some, some settings. And other zones are used for grouping to break down what you see into different groups, separate graphs, different combinations. And these are the group Y and group X, which is used right now. So we. Uh, sorry, it's the wrap we, we use right now. So that's the, the, the combination giving us a grid. And then there's also the overlay and the page view. So which separates the graphs page by page. Okay, let me close this guy and come use another data set which is about fuel economy and engines. And here's our next data set to be used for, for visualizations. And let us see what different graphs we can build depending on the modeling types. So you see on this data set, we have what's of interest, the uh, miles per gallon for city traffic, highway, and the combined miles per gallons. So these are continuous variables, but we also have several categorical, in this case, nominal variables in our data set. So let's see how to create different combinations of continuous and co co uh, categorical uh, variables um, using Graph Builder. So let us start with a continuous by continuous case first. So in this case, I take the city miles per gallon and drop them on the y axis. And oops, as you see, we get two different types of markers, crosses or plus signs and uh, circles. And that's the case because the markers are set as row states and uh, properties in the data table. So on, on that red triangle here, you can color or mark the rows by other columns. And that's done by using the engine information, which is hybrid or gas. Yeah, so one of them is hybrid, the group of hybrid engines. The other one is the group of gas engines. Maybe you can guess which one is um, which engine type, but let's see how this um, develops further. So I can just take the engine displacement, another continuous variable and drop it on the X axis. And now we also get a smoother by default. And I change the smoother into a line. And here we see that if the engine displacement increases, then the city miles per gallon decreases as expected. Bigger engines, less way to go, or hopefully faster. But I can also take the, the engine type here, and then I add this variable to the picture and I use the engine type to wrap 
the data. So now we see gas and hybrid side by side. And we see directly that this group here, which is the gas group of engines, has a lower miles per gallon than the hybrid group of engines. You can also combine this into one graph using the overlay, which does some grouping, but on the same graph. And now we see the data points colored by engine type and the line of fit colored by engine type. And we see the same um, result, maybe even better. I could also look at other outputs. So I can activate ellipses, for instance. So now I see where the data are for our two groups, gas and hybrid engines. Um, but we don't see the data points right now. So to add the data points, I can drag and drop the points element and keep the mouse button pressed. And then I layer the points on top of the ellipses, or I can just click and press the shift key, the shift button, and then I also layer the two elements. There's also a contour plot which shows where the data points are. So for both hybrid, the red, and gas, the blue ones. And I can also change it into a heat map which also shows us where we have the, the most engines. So this group here, um, which with this engine displacement and a lower city miles per gallon. So we have a high number 11 engines in this group. And we also have a high number of engines in, in this group here. can also change the gradient easily into other colors, change the color scheme. Maybe if you want to change it into green to red, so that can be done quite easily. Okay, so that was continuous by continuous with several graph types or elements. Let's start again and look into continuous so I take again the city miles per gallon, but by a categorical variable. And as the categorical variable, I take the engine. So now we see the data points, city miles per gallon in two groups. On the left, the gas, and on the right, the hybrid type engines. So one comment here, if you want to change the orders, so the order by default is alphanumeric sorting. Um, if you want to change it by double clicking the axis, you can, you can easily reverse the order if that's what you want. So now you see on the preview down here, how it changes. I could also add a, a grid like you see the preview and then I click done and now the order is, is changed just by a double click. So reverse order, I, I clicked it twice. So now we have hybrid and gas, gas on the right hand side. If you want to have a specific order of your values for a categorical variable, then you can also set a column property in column info, you see column properties, and there's one for value ordering. So here you can move your your labels up and down you know, to configure a specific value ordering scheme. So another element is the, the contra plot, or you get a, a violent plot. In, in this case, 
what probably makes sense. So I can again take the points and add them to the picture. And I also take the number of cylinders and add this continuous variable. And I use the sizing and now you see that the markers are sized by number of cylinders. So that's shown here. So the size goes up if the city mileage per gallon goes down. So that's as expected. Maybe this can be better seen if we move this from sizing to coloring. So now you see that the number of cylinders goes up from blue to red and then the mileage per gallon goes down from blue to red. I could also put it here or other drop zones and to remove it just move it out of the graph and drop it and then the verbal is gone. So especially in this case probably box plots are a good way to, to, to visualize your, your data. Um, so you see the, the quartiles, you see outliers, you could see outliers if you would have them. So, so here we don't have any outliers. Here, so you see the median and if you add the, the data points, you, you, you also see the data, but the box plots um, show the, the distributions very nicely. I can also change it into a histogram and if you want to swap the dimensions y and x, I can right click a variable and then swap this with engine and then they are um, exchanged and now we see the, the, the gas histogram um, horizontally. Okay, let me start over again. Another nice element a graph type in, in, in the continuous by categorical case is this one here. Let me get the same y variable, the miles per gallon. And now on the x axis, I use the categorical transmission type. And for this one, I choose the bars. So now we see, so what do we see per group? We see the mean miles per gallon per transmission group. Yeah, and the mean is configured here in the element properties for the bar element and we can change it uh, to, to the minimum or, or range or, or other um, statistics. By default, you see the mean in, in this case. If I take the number of cylinders now and add it to, to the picture, I could do this. S sizing doesn't do anything, but if I choose coloring, you see that the bars are now colored by number of cylinders, as you see on the legend here. So the highest mean number of cylinders can be found for this group here, which is Auto S7 specific transmission type. I could also move it to overlay. Now you see it's different. So now we see bars for the different groups, different bars. So now the grouping was done. So here we just add some properties to one bar chart, but now we break it down using the overlay drop zone and we see different bars, blue, red and green ones for the different um, numbers of, of cylinders. Uh, again, you could ch check if this is maybe telling the story better just by wrapping or it depends on what you want to compare, which story you want to tell, but you can 
easily check the preview and then drop the verbal where it makes most sense to you. If you put it on page, then you get different graphs per group. In this case, number of cylinders. So for eight, we get the graph down here. So you get different pages, different graphs. And by getting it up, I can combine it again. Okay, so let me get it back to, to coloring here. So I add the points again by clicking the shift key and or pressing the shift key and clicking the points element. And now we see the, the coloring, which is done on the bars, but also on the points. If you don't want to have the points colored, you can go to the points settings, the properties, and there you see how the variables are used. So here, the, for the points, I don't want to use the coloring dimension. So then it's taken away and we see all the points in, in black again, and the coloring is only used on the bars. So that's a one reason, and there are many more reasons, and uh, yeah, to, to, to change the variables you use and how to use them um, on different elements, especially if you want to layer different elements in one graph. So this gives you a lot of control um, how to, how to uh, configure them. And finally, so the last one is categorical by categorical. So for, for this case, I take this car line class description, which is categorical, and I take transmission type again, the other categorical variable, and then we see our data points, the circles and the, the plus signs. Fortunately, they are jittered, so we get some idea how many how, um, data points we have and in, in for which combination. But it's, it's, it's not really easy to see. It's much, much easier if you switch this to, to a heat map, for instance, and then you see that we have the most engines, maybe nine engines in this group, which has the auto AV transmission and is used on the car line SUV for WD. Again, the gradient is maybe not perfect in, in this case. So if we change this to white to blue, it's maybe much better to, to see. We could also change it to discrete scale because we have counts which are discrete. And then it's maybe nicer and easier to see and to, to, to read. I could also change it to a mosaic plot. And then we get this output here. So before explaining the, the x, x axis and, and what we see there, let me get another graph. So the transmission types on the x axis, we see transmission types. So if we get a bar chart and if you show the numbers yeah, and that's done here. So we see that we have the most, most of the engines are in these two groups and we only have a few engines in this group or in this group. And that's exactly shown by the widths of these bars. So that's a, a merged bar chart in, in, in two dimension. Yeah, and the widths on the x-axis tells you about the proportions of a certain engine type for all the engines we have. And on the y-axis, we see the car line class descriptions per group. So that's the 100% of engines per group. And then you see 
how many en engines fall into which car line class for a specific transmission type. Yeah, so let me do this to, to better read the, the graph. Maybe we want to see all the transmission type labels and we don't see them yet. Maybe it helps to make this vertical. And yeah, it does. So now you see that we only have a few engines in this transmission group here, auto A5, and all of them belong to the subcompact cars. Yeah, so there are only a few in these two groups, but all of them belong to SUVs. Yeah, most of them are in this group, in this transmission group, and we have many different car line classes represented. Most of them in this transmission group belong to the SUV 4WD class. Yeah, I can also select the car line classes on the legend and see where they fall into the, the, the mosaic plot. Okay. So that's about some, some, some ba basic graphing. Um, let me move on and mention some other topics. So customi customization, we already saw how to customize a, a graph. Don't forget the right click, standard jump. Um, if you prefer a specific uh, gradient color scheme or um, marker types or sizes or that then go to the preferences yeah, so on the mac it's jump preferences on windows the file menu and then you can customize um, the settings access settings can be changed easily for resizing using the the hand tool um, or double click and reconfigure the access labels are useful in many cases so I just added Lawrence uh, so I added a label on that row I made the row active for default labeling but you can also add labels you can fix tags um, in a graph so maybe I will show you that later on <clears throat> and you can have annotations so from the tools menu you can annotate text information lines and polygon um, forms or other shapes. So you can customize your, your graph in, in different ways before you export it, share it, show it um, to tell the story. Some more advanced usage of Graph Builder, what, what you maybe don't see right at the beginning. Um, is how to use multiple variables on the axis. And for, for that, I open another data set. This is about movies, Hollywood movies. Um, and we see some, some scores for, for different movies and we see their theme and genre um, and world, foreign, domestic, gross. So a lot of information for 136 Hollywood movies. So let me show you how to work with multiple variables um, on, on access. So let me start with um, Graph Builder. And I take the production budget to the X axis. And then we see, oh, there's one very expensive uh, movie here, which is Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, and then I add the audience score. So I want to know if the budget was higher, is the score better? So that's hopefully the case. So I add the score on, on the y-axis. And now we see, if I switch to, to a line, yes, there's a slight improvement by spending more money on the audience score. I, I could also change the degree to this one or this one. This is maybe a bit uh, crazy. So let us go back because we, we don't have enough data to, 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 to fit a cubic 
um, curve here. So let me go back to, to, to the linear fit. So as you see, now we look at the audience score on the x-axis. What about the Rotten Tomatoes score? If I want to replace the audience score by Rotten Tomatoes score, I drop the new variable on that drop zone here in the middle, and this replaces the existing variable. So now we see the Rotten Tomato scores on that on the y-axis, and we, we see a negative um, slope for the line, which is quite quite interesting. I could also show both. So I can take the audience score again and add it here or down here. So there are two other drop zones. So to combine, to merge several variables on the same graph, and they, they use the, their own axis. Yeah, so they are shown, both scores are now shown side by side. I can click undo. And now I take the audience score again and do something different. So I merge both variables on the same scale. So for that, I take the next variable to the inner drop zone, which is inside the, the graph here. And there you see, oh, at this variable, to the y-axis and combining the scale. And now you see that both variables are shown on the same scale and we see two line of fit and uh, the red one and, and the blue one on the same graph. Now I can also switch the, the, the line of fit off again. Um, there's a third variable, also continuous, theaters opening. Um, so how many theaters showed the film on the opening weekend? So if I combine that variable, I could add it, of course, separately. But I could also combine this. And now you see, in this case, maybe it doesn't make sense because the, the, the scale is really different compared to the other two existing variables, which, which now dropped to the bottom because they had a much smaller scale. So what can we do in this case? In this case, you could right click and then take one variable to a second axis on the right. And I take the audience score and now this is moved to the right and this variable gets its own scale. Yeah, and maybe the better one, let me get it back. So the theater's opening and Move left, the audience score. There we are. So now this is probably the, the best way to have the scores on the left sharing the same scale and the theaters on the opening weekend on their own scale. So on the x axis, I could also add another continuous variable. So I can add the world graphs side by side to the production budget. And now I'm done. I can open this uh, and I could also add maybe a line of fit in this case. And I can also right click. I don't need to go back to the control panel all the time. And here we see that both scores increase if the world grass increases. Of course, if more money comes in, um, so the, the scores are better, more people um, watch the movie. 
Yeah, but the production budget doesn't necessarily lead to a better audience or Rotten Tomatoes score. Okay. So uh, another one, combining variables, can be shown for categorical theme by genre. So now we look at this graph here and I choose the, the heat map. Yeah, and we see that not all the themes are uh, used in, in all the genres. So for instance, the, the, the laugh theme is, is not not used for, it's, it's in romance, of course, but not in thrillers or horror movies. Uh, and now we have categorical by categorical combined. If I take both scores again to the y-axis and now I take genre to the x-axis and I change this to, to a bar graph. So now we see the bars. These are the mean scores for Rotten Tomatoes and audience. And you can change the bar style. So it's by default side by side, but you can change it to to stacked. That's maybe a bit difficult to, to interpret and to read the at least the, the red ones, the audience scores. Um, maybe a nice one is the, the nested layout bar style. So you see that typically the audience scores are higher than the Rotten Tomato scores, except for adventure movies. You know, or there are even other types. So there's a needle style where thin lines or just floats. Um, let me go back to, to nested. When you're done, you click done. Let me move the legend maybe to the bottom. And that's the final graph. Okay, let me get back to the control panel because I want to take a, another example to show you how to use variables for another purpose. So let me create the graph first. So I look at the scores again by genre. But in this case, I want to sort the genre by world gross. So I don't want to sort the x-axis by alphanumeric sorting or value labels. I want to sort based on another variable. And that can be done by dragging and dropping the variable. And you see there is a, there's a special drop zone for sorting. And if I drop the world gross variable here, so then this tells you now genre is ordered by world gross. It's sending. And if you click, you can change it to descending or use other variables for sorting the labels of a categorical variable. Okay. So for new variables, let us stay on, on, on that data set here um, and show you some, some examples. Um, graph Builder. And um, what about world graphs, but you don't want to use the values as they are but you want to use a transformed column. You don't need to create it on the data set. You can just right click a single variable and then choose a transformation. 
Maybe you guess domestic and foreign gross is the sum the same as world gross. That can be tested easily. So I choose, I select these two variables, right click, and now I can create the sum. And you see these are virtual columns now, temporary columns, not on the data table yet. You can of course save them but they are just available in this analysis right now. And I can take this one and drag and drop and you see, yes, this sum is exactly the same as the world gross. You can also have formulas. Yeah, and that's also an, an interesting thing here. So this is about US population. So we have for 250 years, every 10 years, a measurement of the US population in millions. And we also have a formula. So here you can see the formula. Yeah, and let me show you how to visualize this. So I can take the formula and put it to, to the Y axis and look at the data by year. Be careful, this is not a formula yet. This is not the curve of the formula, the function. These are the points plus a smoother through the points. Yeah, so to show the formula, I choose the formula element. And now this is different. So now we see that now it Extra, there's extra, extrapolation into the future. Yeah, so this is the the function. Yeah, and if I add the the population, if I merge it here and add bar charts to the picture, and I want to see the bars only for the population, not for the formula. So then we see that this is the me measured population until 2000. And then this is the, the formula predicting the population. And then you see that you have to be careful going up in this way. If this would continue, maybe more conservative this way. And yeah, so this use the formula element where you can show functions in graph builder that's quite special another special and exciting feature maybe a bit like a geographic information system is the mapping feature of graph builder and let me show you some options you have with mapping so the first is to use shape files. And this is also about demographics, but more information about the US, uh, including the, the population, but also other variables in this case. So I choose graph builder again. And now there's a state with state names. So I can drop this variable on this map shape drop zone and then maybe take the smokers and color this by percentage of smokers. And then we see that we have 28% um, or more smokers in, in this one here. And this is, what is it? Um, Kentucky probably. So let me change the state for labeling. So now I can tell you that this is Kentucky and this is Utah, which has a, a low percentage of, of smokers. I could also add a region here. So I, we could maybe wrap by region. I add the, the, the missing uh, states and now we see this, the graph, but also only for the Midwest and the Northeast and the Western states. Um, separated. Let me get region off again. So there's a, another way to use geographic information if you have latitude and longitude information. So if you have coordinates of your data, 
then you see, oh, this is hmm, Alaska, this is Hawaii. Maybe this gives you an idea where we are, but you can add a background map on the graph menu. So background map, and then for instance, simple earth. And now we see that we have um, a bitmap as a background and I could again use smokers maybe by coloring and then we see um, yeah, the same percentage of smokers but as colored dots on a background map. A third way also uses latitude and longitude and this is crime statistic from San Francisco and here I take the coordinates first switch off the smoother and where are we so here we see oh this is block of a uh, golf street and uh, another street so we are on, on street level right now so in this case I can add street maps as a background and they are loaded from open street map servers so now we see um, street information as as a background map and I can use the the magnifier from the tools menu and zoom into the streets of San Francisco and see what what crime happened in in which in which um, street and quarter you can also import your own bitmaps you can import your own shape files you can even create new shape files uh, so here you see this is a shape file created by a customer so called custom shape file and let me get the control panel so now we have the shapes and i could add maybe the temperature for these offices so that's the floor map and now we see the temperature in fahrenheit by color per office on a floor map. So this could be done by using a tool you can also download from the user community to create custom maps and more information is given by the link in the journal. Um, I want to mention two other generic tools in Jump. Don't forget about them. So that's the, the column switcher to replace one variable by other variables using the same graph template. So create a graph once and then switch variables easily using the column switcher. That's a generic feature in Jump. Another generic feature is the data filter. So you can always add a local data filter on the red triangle and then you can filter a subset of your data based on multiple filter conditions sliders for continuous variables and you can choose um, groups or levels on categorical variables and then the data you see on your graph are filtered according to these conditions for sharing information so there's another um, webinar also about um, sharing results and how to export um, graphs and, and reports from Jump. So just as a reminder, you can always save a graph from Graph Builder as a script to a data table or journal. You can copy and paste special into Word or PowerPoint using a selection first on the tools menu the selection tool or press the s button you can also export to to uh, files and um, images um, scalable vector graphics uh, if you prefer or powerpoint or even create html or interactive html exports and if you have multiple um let me go back to the Um, not this one. This one here. So if you have multiple graphs 
open. So Savile created in, in Graph Builder. Build up. Get this out of the way. And another one. You can easily combine them into one output, a so-called web report, on the view menu and then create web report. And then next you can configure tooltips and titles. And this creates a, a web report, a web page with tooltips. And then you can click on them and, and zoom into a report. And they are still interactive um, also as exported HTML. And finally, you can also combine them as dashboards, another nice way using dashboard builder, file, new, dashboard. Um, and there's finally a way to share graphs um, with iPad users. So there's a graph builder app on the App Store available for free and refer to our product website, which also shows you some, some sample graphs you can share there, but you can also create graphs interactively, send a data set by email or, sh or uh, have it on, on Dropbox or um, iCloud. And then you can open the data set and, and create graphs interactively on your iPad. Okay, so there's some more information and some other links to, to learn more in the journal. Um, you can download the journal later and then follow um, these links. Um, I really recommend these pictures from the galleries with some step-by-step -step guides to really create some advanced graphs using Graph Builder. And you also see how they are done. So here you see how to create this graph about um, Brexit. Um, the Brexit referendum. And here you see the step-by-step -step guides how to create this. So these are really special and advanced applications of, of Graph Builder. There's also a nice book. And yeah, check our email you will receive later. You can watch a recording of this webinar or get the journal from our webpage, the Academic Webinar Library. And of course, we are always happy to help if you send an email to academic at jump.com.